welcome back to the Root BSD channel. Today I have a special treat for you. I am going to give you a tour of my Starfish desktop. Uh, I just set up the Starfish bar. The Starfish bar is written in Ruby and it uses the i3 status program. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to go through and show you all the cool things about my desktop and uh, I'm going to go through some OpenBSD resources for learning and Towards the end of this video, I'm going to do just a quick presentation on how to performance tune your computer for desktop usage once you install OpenBSD. So let's get started. As always, a complimentary NeoFetch. We are running OpenBSD 7.0 current uh, natively on the CPU. This is an HP Elite Desk 800, and my GPU is an AMD Turks. And uh, we have 12 gigabytes of memory, and we are currently using 2.1 gigabytes out of 12 gigabytes. So that's not bad. I've had this, I've been doing a lot of work. This, this has been up for a long time. All right, and first off, let's, uh, the music that you're listening to is Lo Fi Hip Hop Mix 2021 by Lo Fi Geek. I'll have all the, uh, the proper attribution in the description and the proper links. Can't really hear anything right now. Let's see if we can. Turn this up. Now this program I'm bringing up looks like also mixer. It's called CMixer. See, that's a little better. There we go. Alrighty. Now let's talk about rat poison. So rap, with rat poison, with my config, here, let me bring up my config right here. Uh, my escape key, my mod key, is the Windows key. So every time I press Windows, this little box pops up right here, and that tells me that it's waiting for a command. So, uh, normally what you can do is you can cycle through Windows, so mod key N stands for next, and then I can cycle through Windows like that. Mod key P stands for previous, or you can do it by numbers, so we can get a list of uh, what's what I have uh, currently on Thuner, my graphical file browser, and Thuner's pretty cool. I got, um, I got picture thumbnails, and I have video thumbnails. And Windows key plus K will turn that off. And if if you're if I'm ever confused as to what my key bindings are, if I press Windows key question mark, I got a little cheat sheet here to tell me all the different commands. And you know, zero through nine are the different windows. Um, you can kill the, uh, the window by pressing K or get a title. I can do uh, tiling by pressing Windows key, uh, Windows key capital S. Or if I want to put everything back to normal, I do Windows key capital Q. Or if I do Windows key lowercase s, I get it like that. And uh, you can see here all the different commands you can you can do, and also if you uh, if you uh, press let's see here Windows key colon, you can put in commands like restart or quit will send you back to XenoDM. We're not going to do that right now. Windows key F1, I'm sorry, Windows key F2 will put me into Workspace 2. F3 will be Workspace 3. Windows key C opens up a terminal. And I generally, I use Tmux so I don't have to open up tons of terminals in Tmux. Control plus B, C opens up another uh, another window. Or Control B, quotation mark, will split the window. And then uh, Control B arrow will go up. And I have E alias for exit. And I have CLR, alias for clear screen. Control B percent splits splits the window in two uh, uh, vertically. And then uh, and then with workspaces, workspaces go F1 all the way through F11. Now I have F12 uh, keybind to uh, shut the window manager off too. That's another uh, quit uh, command I have, and you can see that right in my. Uh, my custom key bindings. So that's window key question mark to bring this screen up. And you can see all my custom, uh, you know, E starts Emacs, um, men the menu button starts my, uh, the, the program C Mixer. Uh, Windows key plus home starts Chrome. 
and it starts my start page. Uh, Windows key plus D starts D menu, and I have a nice little D menu set up right here. Yeah. And you can see all the different commands. Like I have Windows key and alias to open um, open up Link's graphical frame buffer, and that's what we're using to go through the frequently asked questions. Now. Uh, we go back to our first workspace, mod, or mod key F1, that's Windows key F1, and we can exit out of here. And I've been using VI, uh, I, I do like to use uh, Vim, I'm, I prefer NeoVim, but I've been forcing myself to use VI and I've been getting much more comfortable with it and learning how to do the, a lot of the, 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 you know, the OG modal editing. And I think that's going to help me when I start learning NeoVim, I think that's going to help out a lot that I used VI. Um, let's see here. And uh, I think that's... You know, rat poison is really simple. Um, this uh, this bar here is called the store fez bar. So let me uh, let me bring that one up. Now the store fez bar it was written by uh, by JCS, and it's written in Ruby. It's pretty neat, but it's it's a little bit advanced for me. So. Um, so far, I just got uh, very simple. It just tells me what my volume is, the date, and the time. Uh, what I want to eventually do is have it tell me um, what window I'm on at all times, like give me the number, and CPU and memory information and hard disk information would be great. This does use uh, i3 status, so uh, I'll figure it out. Um, you know, I'm about, I'd say about 15-20% eh, of completely figuring out this window manager and figuring out this bar and eventually I want to actually start getting in the source code and, and seeing if I can make some modifications for me you know because I, I did fork this just to just to play around and learn how to how to fork a pr project and I am learning C programming or well yeah you know, I'm trying to learn C programming it's 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 a little touch and go uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best but and also uh, you can see here in VI I have numbers working here so we press Windows key plus G opens up my graphical file browser. Now this one doesn't isn't controlled by key bindings, but I wanted to show you um, document viewing. So this is a uh, notes for notes for professionals, and this is a really great uh, series of books that are free on Goal Kicker. Let me just bring that up real quick. On. A lot of these, I've been restarting this all day, so a lot of these haven't loaded yet. Here we go. Uh, this is a great uh, website. It's called goldkicker.com, and it has a lot of free programming books that are regularly updated. And I do like to use these books. Like here's the C programming book. Pretty neat stuff. And they're free to download. And uh, all they ask is maybe uh, help help them out, give them order a coffee or donate to them. Uh, you can learn a lot from these projects. So I highly recommend this. Next, so uh, one of my favorite uh, for document viewing, my favorite program is called Events. It's, it's the GNOME uh, PDF viewer, and it's just a fantastic PDF viewer. I you know I think one of the hardest things to do with computers sometimes is to read PDFs. I used to just have the hardest time with them. And look at this; just makes it so much easier. You got the table of contents right here on the left-hand side. It has dark mode, um, and it's just fantastic looking. I love the 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 um, the coloring of syntax. I mean, you just can't beat this, and it's great for taking notes. You know, I have my laptop on the side with Doom Emacs, and I can just take tons of notes in org mode. So it's great for learning and, and studying. And uh, you know, if I want to listen to some music, get my jams on. Let's see here, I have, this program is called Clementine. It's one of my favorite uh, open source uh, music playing programs and it'll also play internet radio and, and all your uh, your offline music collection. And um, let me pause the music in Chrome just to show you uh, that one working. This one's a little bit more mouse-driven. 
So unfortunately, because, you know, if I play pretty much any of these songs, I, I risk getting a copyright strike. So I do have permission to play music by Matt's Medicine. So we'll play this. And I have the Nyan Cat uh, at full frames. Let me get it up to a little louder. Now I don't have real audio being recorded from the desktop just yet. I'm still kind of learning how to do that. So, so I'm, it's a work in progress. Like I said, I'm about 15-20% into mastering this uh, this this setup. This it's basically this program is is a fork of Rat Poison. And uh, everyone knows Rat Poison. Uh, uh, it's well known, and um, most people usually think of it as kind of a boring window manager. Uh, I remember Brian Lundu saying you couldn't be friends with anybody that uses Rat Poison, and I'm just like, well, Brian, I just don't think you really knew what you were doing. You got scared, and it's a really simple program. It's like one of the easiest window managers ever to configure. Did you see my my config? I mean, this thing is so simple. Here we go. Look at this really complex. Oh no. Oh man. Uh, this is too much for me. This is seriously complex. <laughs> I mean, look at this thing. Um, let's get back to Clementine. And uh, yeah, we have support for uh, thumbnails. And if you right click here, visualizations, we got some neat visualizations. So you can trip out and have your little rave in, 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 in your room. This music's by uh, a friend of the channel, his name is DJ Matt's Medicine, or he goes by Medicine. And I'll put a link in the description, definitely check out Medicine. He's a great drum bass producer. Pretty neat stuff. Alright, let me pause that. And also, yes, when you, I, uh, whenever the track changes, I get a... See if I can bring it back up. I get a nice... Uh, this one right here, a nice notification showing me exactly what the track is. Okay, and let's get back to running this one. And uh, if you're wondering what I'm using here, this is called Vimium. It's a great program because uh, I'd rather use Chrome because Chrome is using Pledge and Unveil, so it's more secure than Cute Browser. And this gives you the Vim keys, kind of like the, 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 the kind of functionality that Cute Browser has. So it's kind of getting the best of both worlds using Vimium and Chromium. All right. Next, uh, oh yes, and uh, I I wanted to show you guys this. Um, OpenBSD has a native built-in screen locker. It's called XLock, and you can see right here the command to run this is exec XLock dash mode matrix. Now, I know you guys on Linux love to run C matrix, right? Well, check out our version of matrix. Welcome to the Matrix. What if I told you there was an operating system that was secure, robust, and portable, and had integrated cryptography? Okay, <laughs> anyways, I hope you like that. So let's uh, get back in. My super secret password. That I'm probably going to screw up. Yeah, but I screwed it up. Okay, one more time. Perfect. And then this is Doom Emacs. And just show you really quick uh, what I have set up in this. Oh. It's not drawing perfectly, so sometimes I have to press F11 to kind of toggle it to get it to draw to fit the frame, fit the screen properly. So, here's just a basic org mode. This is kind of some notes I was taking on org mode. See, it's pretty cool. That's my Doom Emacs setup. And uh, also we have other programs on here. Uh, we have Godot. So I can make video games on here if I wanted to. Uh, let's see, and let's uh, let's get into the OpenBSD uh, resources real quick. Okay, so this is uh, this is an OpenBSD developer named Celine, 
and she has this wonderful blog uh, that goes through all sorts of different subjects. And um, oh, I see. This is this is the article. Okay. So uh, definitely check out Celine's uh, blog. It's called uh, Data Swamp. I guess I opened several of those. This is a, a, a website called Calamel. Now, uh, use this at your own risk. There's a lot of tutorials and guides here for not only for OpenBSD, but FreeBSD. Uh, a lot of networking guides and different things um, like Firefall, Firefox proxy through an SSH tunnel. We got uh, DNS. It, ha it talks about how to set up local unbound in OpenBSD. Uh, the open send mail to people daemon how to. So a lot of different stuff here. You know, MUT config. Uh, carp on FreeBSD 10. No. There we go. Secure open SSH config reference here. Gives you little guides on uh, setting up SSHD. So some neat stuff. I definitely say use this stuff at your own risk and make sure you do your homework before goofing around with a lot of these guides. Uh, this is JCS's blog. Pretty cool. Uh, he goes, he uh, tests out a lot of different hardware. Here we got OpenBSD on the Huawei uh, Matebook X, OpenBSD on the Framework Laptop, his fanless OpenBSD desktop. This guy, is, this guy is, the, is the one that's responsible for the window manager and the bar that I'm using. So definitely a big fan of his work. Uh, definitely check out JCS's uh, blog. He, uh, he, he shows that a, a lot of different new hardware that he's getting working with OpenBSD. For some of you guys that are looking to maybe purchase a, a, a new device for just for BSD usage. Uh, this one's really cool. It's legoro.github.io. It's called Awesome OpenBSD. A uh, nice little uh, collection of guides. And um, it's a curated list of awesome OpenBSD resources. I think they say it better than me. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is a website called Why OpenBSD Rocks. Yeah. So if you click on all the facts, all these things give you um, basically little bits of information on not only some of these uh, projects like OpenBGPD and OpenSSH, but also all of OpenBSD's security technologies and mitigations. I use this this website and the OpenBSD uh, the OpenBSD.org website uh, as references when I did my security techniques and mitigations video. So definitely check out uh, why OpenBSD.rocks. Here's uh, this is undeadly.org. This is kind of like our our new our official newsletter or news source for OpenBSD news. Uh, whenever there's been new breakthroughs or new technologies committed to uh, the the source tree or new releases, they have all the information on here. This is a very great great resource, and they have other guides too. Right here, the OpenBSD resources right here. There we go. Obviously, uh, definitely check out the OpenBSD frequently asked questions. This is Mark.info. Uh, this is the OpenBSD miscellaneous mail list. I definitely recommend uh, just you know checking out the mail list, just seeing all the different questions that are being asked. So if you ever you know have a serious question, uh, if you're looking to maybe um, to really uh, uh, solve a, a problem, you know uh, after reading your man pages and doing some homework, or maybe if something doesn't make sense, hop on the mailing list and uh, and and see uh, see if you can uh, get some help. So definitely check out the uh, the mark.info mailing list. Uh, OpenBSD miscellaneous is where all the questions are asked. And there's also OpenBSD tech for the much more technical stuff if you want to submit some code or some patches. And uh, there's also the announce mailing list. And, and uh, those, there's mailing lists for all the different architectures too, like for ARM64, for Spark, for uh, you know uh, the PowerPC, and stuff like that. Uh, this is the OpenD OpenBSD webzine. I believe it was started by Celine, so definitely check it out. Uh, you can look at the different issues. This is issue 2, 7.0 release, great artwork. Uh, an interview with, uh, who's, who's interviewed on, on here? It doesn't specify. Anyways, check it out. Uh, this is Celine's uh, uh, webzine. And this, of course, I showed you this. Okay, and uh, let's get to the OpenBSD uh, performance tuning guide. All right, 
the OpenBSD Desktop Performance Tuning Guide. Last time I did one of these, I was hitting the space bar a little too hard, so I'm gonna try to hit it softly. You know, you know, this is like this is an ASMR moment. Step one: configure your video card. So the main video drivers for the OpenBSD, OpenBSD Desktop are Intel, ATI, and AMD GPU. And I definitely recommend whatever product you have, read the man page for it first, okay? Now, for Intel, it's gonna look like this. Uh, now, I generally, I always create the folder xorg.conf.d, you don't have to, I, it's just what I do, I like to do it. There's a, if you read the Intel man page, there's uh, multiple places it will look for, uh, look for an xorg.conf or 20intel.conf. And that's an example of just what you basically need to do is you just, you need to uh, uh, have a little file like this and uh, you want to set tear free to true. And then for Radeon, it's very similar. Uh, I just, uh, I set Excel method to glamour and then I set tear free on. And I believe DRI3 is on by default if you have an, a, a more up-to-date version of X. And of course, uh, OpenBSD has a, a very up-to-date version of X. All right, step two. Add a user to the staff login class. And this command's really simple. It's just do as user mod minus capital L staff and the name of the user. And then what that does is it will um, it will add you to the, the staff uh, login class, and then what you can do is you can open up a file called etc. login.conf, and I'll open that up real quick. I'll just open it up with less, so. So, what it's talking about is this staff section. You can raise these values, these data size values. I have these sent to infinite right here. And I bumped up max processes and the max cross curve. Now, it comes with a default, um, the defaults for staff. Uh, some people say that those are plenty enough that you need for desktop performance and you're not supposed to mess with them. I tell them nuts to you, this is my computer, don't tell me what to do, you're not my dad. <laughs> so I just set these things as high as I can, but you can do you can if you want to just use the default staff uh, settings, that's fine. That's probably recommended. If you want to be nutty like me and bump that stuff up and set it to infinity, go right ahead. I just want to squeeze all the performance I can, and you can see the system uh, performs very well. Uh, let's go to five, six. Okay. So now the next step would be to enable the APM daemon. So I definitely would recommend reading the RC control man page and the APM da APMD man page. And those are the commands to get it going. You know, do, do as RC, RC control, enable APMD, and then set the status on. And then you want to set your flags. Uh, uh, the flag lower or uppercase L is for power save mode. That's definitely useful if you're uh, if you're using a laptop and you're uh, you're on the go and you need power save mode for OpenBSD. I would do uh, minus L, minus A is automatic. That's usually the best option, and minus H uh, is your going to be your highest option, meaning it's using the most power. Just give the most electricity to that CPU. And you can also, and a lot of times, you can go in your BIOS and set your CPU for performance too. So just. And, and that writes to your etc. rc.conf.local. So I'll show you that right here. So you don't want to write to the rc.conf, you want to write to the rc.conf.local. So you can see here, my APMD flags are set to minus H. And I believe that uh, that setting, I'll give it the proper name for that setting. Yeah, it's a HW set perf to 100. All right. And step four, enable soft devs. So definitely read the F stab man page. 
Soft Updates imposes a partial ordering on the buffer cache operations which permits the requirement for synchronous writing of directory entries to be removed from the FFS code. A large disk writing performance increase is seen as a result. So enabling soft updates will uh, result in a large disk writing performance increase. Okay. And this is, you just put it right there at the end. Since I only have uh, one root partition set up on this, I don't have slices, that's exactly what my, FF, my file system tab looks like. And if possible, get a solid state drive. The FFS2 file system performs really well on SSDs and NVMe. It really does. It's like night and day over a mechanical hard drive. And you could, I mean, anybody could say, yeah, that the SSDs are just faster. But I'm just saying, like, a lot of people always notice how just how slow the disk performance is just on our old school hard drive. I mean, uh, you know, with Linux, it doesn't necessarily go much slower on old mechanical drives or just, you know, mechanical drives in general. But you do notice the difference with OBSD. So I, with, I, with all my machines, I have everything on SSDs, and it's fantastic. It's great performance boost. All right. And use PyCom. Definitely, uh, you can either uh, put it in a window manager config or your .x session, or you can create a pycom.conf. And I put this in my storefest config. It's just pycom s backend glx dash s vsync minus f minus b, and um, it just it really does help out with uh, screen tearing and just smoothing everything out, and just really puts a nice polish on everything. Now, pycom can occasionally be a little bit buggy, but it's not terrible. It's not very frequent. Just, you know, maybe after like eight hours of usage and having tons of windows open, you might experience a little bit of flickering and stuff like that, but it's not that bad. And usually it goes away once you just tap through some windows. All right. Now this is optional network tuning uh, for etc. syscontrol.conf that I got from Calamel. I'm not 100% sure if, any, if this is really making a big difference in my network performance. Um, I just show it to you that I am I am using this. Uh, this is this is uh, what my syscontrol conf do, does look like. And uh, if it's a complete placebo, if it's not really making a difference, then you know that's on me. I'm just I'm just you know testing and goofing around. So that's all. Alrighty. And yeah, it's a fantastic system. And I have emulators. I have video games. I mean, I can show you really quick right here. We can show FNAFI. This is a Linux game. It's gonna, I'm going to have it running natively on the CPU. I'm not using a binary compatibility layer. layer. Um, it's using OpenBSD's uh, port of Mono. Oh, let me. Uh... And you can see uh, just great graphics and smooth. Everything's smooth. Fly around with. This is a great game. I, I definitely am going to do a playthrough of this game. Probably I have a I have a new root BSD BSD gaming channel. I want to put a link in the description. Check out my gaming channel. I do a lot of retro gaming, but I'll probably be doing some F FNA stuff in there too. But I'm going to be starting out with some uh, with some Sega Saturn and PlayStation and uh, PlayStation Portable titles because that's just kind of the gaming that I like. But anything uh, that's super uh, special, uh, I'll do with, with the regular channel. What we're going to have coming up is I'm going to do a playthrough of Half-Life 1 using the X-Ash 3D engine. And then we're also going to use the Godot to play a game called Cruelty Squad. And that's going to be pretty exciting. And uh, I'm going to definitely try to get better at video games so that my video game uh, uh, screencastings just aren't complete trash. I know that they are. <laughs> Maybe and I'll also maybe have my little my little boy. He's pretty good at video games. I might have him play some of the stuff. He's a little bit better at me then. And uh, you know we're running out of time. Uh, that's that's about everything. Um, I hope you got something out of this. You know this is definitely a work in progress system. You know it's not perfect. You know. Uh, but yeah. Any, uh, if you guys uh, have any comments or uh, uh, concer uh, questions or you, you want to see me do something special, uh, just put, put it in the comment section. Um, I do have some cool projects coming up, like I'm going to do uh, a, a presentation on the history of the BSDs, the BSD kernel, and, and the differences between all the different BSD projects. And we're going to continue our Frequently Asked Questions uh, 
Our, we're going to go through the OpenBSD FAQ, and um, I want to do a video on CWM, the COM window manager, and I want to do a video on um, setting up my own DNS, local unbound, and uh, we might play around with stuff like Suricata, using things like Cron, and uh, other different system administrative stuff, and you know, some of the IT side stuff, you know, I'm not always going to be so focused on just the desktop usage. Because OpenBSD isn't all about desktop usage. A lot of OpenBSD's tools are for IT. And, uh, you know, once I can get the money, I would love to put OpenBSD on a bare metal server. I have somebody that'll host the server for me. And uh, I'd also love to uh, build an OpenBSD router. And I have a spare Dell Optiplex that I might actually just turn into a router. The only problem is it only has one Ethernet. That's the issue with some of these devices. They only have one Ethernet port, so it's hard to turn them into a router that way. So uh, definitely uh, I'm going to keep plugging away, and uh, I hope you got something out of this, and uh, you guys have a great day. Bye.